Assalamu alaikum um, listeners and uh, subscribers of Kivaro Network. Uh, again, we bring you news from uh, Peter Gomez, um, an interview with Momodu Sabali. Um, Sabali uh, uh, finally breaks silence regarding um, his move from uh, the United Democratic Party to NPP. He elaborates. A lot of people in NPP, uh, top um, uh, executives, wanted me to leave. Uh, you will hear from our uh, top uh, stories. We get into that story and then if we come back, we elaborate more of what we hear from him. Is your friend Pamane. Thanks for listening, Kibaro Network. Sabs, what happened? Moving from UDP campaign manager to NPP. Peter, a lot happened that may not that I may not be able to explain in one interview. Do your best. But the point is, I was in UDP, mm -hmm. moved in, well received, well positioned within the party, well loved, celebrated, and everything. Like I said, I think it was my interview with the Standard mm -hmm. yesterday mm -hmm. that there is no perfect institution. Just like there is no perfect political party. I mean, every institution has its shortcomings and challenges. Mm -hmm. So, so long as you are in that institution, mm -hmm. no matter how happy you are about mm -hmm. the institution, mm -hmm. there are challenges that you are dealing with. Mm -hmm. So I've dealt with challenges. Um, some of those challenges got compounded, and I'm not going to get into the details of those challenges. Oh, you're, 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 you're going to scratch the surface. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe not into you know, detail, well, detail I, 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 but you'll agreed. scratch the surface, yes? I, I agreed. Mm -hmm. I mean, some, some of these challenges mm -hmm. are, are, are not news to anybody mm -hmm. who is a close observer of the United Democratic Party. And the up aftermath of my departure actually sh exposed some of those challenges, like a top executive member of a political party, somebody as important as your campaign manager leaves the party, and you ask a question and you laugh. You are betraying yourself. You are showing that you never wanted that guy in that party. Who did that? Uh, well, I, th I understand uh, the spokesperson was here. And his reaction to your question was a big laugh. Spokesperson? No, I spoke to him on the telephone. On the telephone, okay. Yeah. Whatever it was. Mm -hmm. Well, the fact is there are some people who are happy about me leaving UDP, and these are top members of the executive, some who have already started throwing shades at me, and they're top members of the UDP. And, uh, you know, so obviously there are some people within the top executive who never wanted me in the party, who made life difficult for me in the party. But like I said, is it only in UDP? Perhaps it's in other political mm -hmm. parties. To sum it up, there are challenges within the party that I tried to live with. I could not fix those challenges. But then the fact is, Peter, NPP have never given up on me. For the past five years Let, or more... Let's stay with UDP yes. for a while. Then we'll get to NPP. Yes. Um, when did you start feeling um, that some within the party, you know, even among the top brass, were not... <laughs> That welcoming well, of it's, you. It's always been there from the get-go. It just got uh, compounded in the past. Uh, what helped you stay all those years you've stayed with the party? Well, the point is when you come new into an institution, and mm -hmm. I'm not a, a fresh guy getting into an institution. And if I say institution, I see the UDP just like the Central Bank or Ministry yeah. of Finance. Yeah. So, I mean, when you get into an institution, some people get some concerns, some genuine, some not so genuine. Mm -hmm. Some would be afraid that you might threaten their position. Some would even question your, 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 your motives. So that's normal. So if it happens for a year or two, I can manage to swim around with that. But if it gets to three, four years, and then certain things happen, then you start to reassess your position. Did you ever complain about this to the party leader? Well, what's happening in any institution is known by all key stakeholders of that institution. Was the party leader aware Peter, I just answered your question. You just don't want my answer, and I'm not going to give you the exact answer that you want. Did he try to reassure you that um, you well, know, the, your the, place the in the party leader, was to unshakable? His credit, to his credit, has always played that role of trying to diffuse the tensions, giving advice here, reassuring people, and not just for me. Anybody who's had challenges has done that for you. Okay. And when you made up your mind... Whenever that was, when we come to, you know, the NPP, we'll go into it. When you made up your mind mm -hmm. to move, um, was he the first one you discussed with? Or did he pick no. it up through the grapevine? No, he was not the first one I discussed with. There is somebody, a trusted, well, how, which word do I use for this guy? Because his role is so big. A trusted person, let me just put it at that. A trusted UDP bigwig. Bigwig, that I spoke to, that 
this is what I want to do. Please extend this message to the party leader. I don't want him to pick it up from the grapevine. Unfortunately, the guy failed me. Oh. And uh, when I re realized that he did not send the message and the time was getting close for me to make the announcement, I sent somebody else who went in person and gave me feedback that he had told the party leader, and the party leader had said that he respects my decision. Would you say trust is an issue within the party? Because if you trusted this person so much as to choose to go through him to get the message, you know, to the party leader, you'd have thought, I mean, that's, that's not so difficult to do. Is trust Peter, an I, issue? I, I would not say that. I would not say that. What I would say that this guy really disappointed me, and I trusted him. It, I didn't even look at him as a member of the party or anything. We had a relationship, mm -hmm. him, I, and the party leader. That's mm -hmm. why I approached him. What was your relationship like with um, other executive members? Well, uh, it was quite okay, uh, barring a few, maybe two, three, uh, that really showed me from the get-go they didn't like me, they didn't want me in the party, and they were actually fighting me, and I knew they were fighting me. But then, like I said, Peter, I'm not new in an institution, so I tried to deal with them, really uh, accommodate them, shake hands, hug a few. You know, At some point, I stopped it with some of them. At some point, I just drew the line. It's not going to happen any longer. Yeah, we try to be as yes. transparent and clear yes. as possible. I mean, yes. was the um, secretary for media um, and publicity one of them, Tombong Sedi? Look, Peter, I'll say one thing. Mm. Tombong may have done a thing or two that I don't like. For instance? No, I'm not going into the details. Like, you I'm know? I'm trying to answer your question, okay. if you'll allow me. Yes, please go ahead. My relationship with Tombong has been quite smooth, to be honest. Really, uh, and this may surprise some people if you know the dynamics of UDP, mm. but I have no specific anger or bad feeling about Tombong. Uh, I think he conducted himself very maturely mm -hmm. in his relationship with me. I want to put that on the record. Mm -hmm. but I, mean, I don't lie. I will not just come out of UDP today and try to throw somebody under the bus. Me and Tombong, our thinkings about how the party should go are not the same. But despite that... Mm -hmm. I and Tombong, I think my first interview here was facilitated by Tombong. Mm -hmm. You know, really, I have a lot of respect for, for, for that gentleman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were not angry when um, the Standard newspaper quoted you as saying that um, Dabo was going to be the flag bearer of the UDP uh, in 2026, and Tombong came on my program to say that was not official? No, I'm not. I'm not, because Tombong is right, that was not official, that was my opinion. Mm. The point is that, Peter, unlike so many people, Momodu Sabari is not afraid of voicing his opinion, even if I know that some big wigs would not like to hear. That. So I'm not angry with Tombong. Mm. I mean, really, I, I, have, I just respect that gentleman, uh, and that's it, Peter. Mm -hmm. I have no bad feelings against him. Since you walked away, I mean, what have... You know, relations been with um, a the um, the party leader and folks like Tombong Sadi. I don't think Tombong and I have not spoken since I left. Mm -hmm. The party leader the same, but I think they all know that I have a lot of respect for them. That uh, I'm not holding any grudges against them, and the party leader was on the record that he respects my decision and that uh, people should let me be. So I've not spoken to any of them. We've not met at any occasion yet, but. There are individual UDP members, executive members, who, I mean, they called in the, <laughs> during the tsunami, and mm -hmm. I could not, so I called back, say, you know what, sorry, my apologies, I, I did not ignore your call, it's just that situation, I could not, and uh, we are cool. Uh, there are some elders, you know, we have a council of elders at the UDP, some of them, they've called me and we spoke, some of them, they still call me. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You spoke about a tsunami, a tsunami of what, <laughs> congratulations or insults? <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both. I think my, my departure created an emotional uproar. So both the positive and the negative. Yeah. How do you respond to a senior member of the party uh, sitting where you are now sat mm -hmm. and saying that, um, uh, you know, your departure was of little, if any, <laughs> consequence to, to the UDP? You know, Peter, if my departure was of no consequence, we would not be speaking about this today. The fact that this is still in the front pages of the nation's top newspapers up to yesterday showed that it has an impact. So, like I said, I responded to guy, that guy on Facebook when the story was carried and by the standard. I said to that one, I will not respond in words. I will respond in action. And they are seeing the actions. What kind of actions? I haven't seen the action. One of the most effective women mobilizers of UDP, Kadisi, say... 
uh, cross carpeted to NPP this weekend. <laughs> that is just one of the many. Some of these youths from Woolley that I brought into the party, they were at the NPP bureau when I came uh, on Wednesday when I was officially welcomed. And, you know, I've, I've had by Malik Sisi, one of the most uh, uh, popular Gambians in the diaspora, who I brought to UDP when I went to State House to accompany my sister Ramosabali when she met Baro. He was there. He declared that his, his, his move to UDP. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. So those kind of statements, I will not respond in words. Mm. I'm just inviting the public to sit and watch. You just told me a short while ago that, um, you know, you want to maintain your respect for the party. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not respecting a party when you start poaching their uh, members and taking them to <laughs> another party. That, that is weakening a party. So how no, do you intend no, to, Peter, to maintain that respect with, you, with UDP? Peter, I, I don't think that is disrespect. And, uh, I mean, if I took somebody to your party mm -hmm. and that person moved based on his trust and love for me, mm -hmm. if I move... Mm -hmm and leave that person there. Like, I'm not going to force anybody to go. But like that lady, like Kadisi say, if I move and leave her there, and she's still shocked trying to understand mm -hmm. why Sabali made he, this move, if I don't go back to that person, I've betrayed that person. Mm -hmm. So that's it. I, I don't think that can be disrespect. Sadio Mane played a key role in the defeat, but he doesn't disrespect them. there. Even his demeanor, you saw that he showed a lot of respect to the Scorpions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's 11 minutes, almost 12 minutes past uh, 10 o'clock. We have subs in the house. Um, yeah, I uh, said formally Baba La Commando, and uh, he says, actually, he's not dead yet. No, I'm not using formally as if the, the, the person doesn't exist uh, anymore. Um, <clears throat> let's move the conversation to NPP now, where yeah. you belong. Mm -hmm. When did they start courting you for the first time? I think for, for the past five years, the, 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 the most recent I remember was in the run-up to the 2021 election. Uh, two top guys came and uh, sat me down. You know. Can we name them? No, I don't want to name them because the way <laughs> those people operate, maybe they don't want to be named. Uh, and these conversations were quite secret because, you know, at the time... I it's knew a betrayal of the, of, of the, of the UDP secretary. Those who were supposed to know, they knew. I'm very transparent, Peter. Those who were supposed to know, so they ba knew. So Baba knew that these people had approached you? Peter, those who were supposed to know, knew. Including Baba? Of course. Okay. I had a conversation with these people. They, they invited me to the party. I said, and anyway, it was just before the election. I said, even at the time we thought UDP would win. But I told them, even mm -hmm. if it is clear to me that UDP would lose the 2021 election, I would stay and lose with them. After the election, they came again to another person who called me and said, come and join us, whatever you want, that's what we'll give you. Really? Yes. He open, said, open check. Absolutely. He said, go, because uh, at the time, the election was disputed. We were about to go to court to challenge the, the, the results. He said, all I want you to do, go out and endorse our election result. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. So there are family, I have family in NPP who've been approaching me, ministers, party executives, and you know. Yes, we know that. Party, uh, Peter, even some members of the president's family, they've been my friends, and we've always had this cordial, respectful relationship. They've approached me. Some of their, their youth leaders who are my mentees. They, they've, they've, even Ahmed Jite, my good friend and brother, has, has had his attempts in the run-up to the 2021 to, to, to try to bring me to end. So they've never given Will up Will you bring me. him back, Jite, just before I lose that line? Jite and I have spoken. <clears throat> I think Jite is very happy with the decision I made. Peter, I don't rush in my politics. I've moved into NPP. I'm trying to settle. When I settle, the results will speak for themselves. You'll, but bring, you'll, is, you'll, bring, is, you'll bring Jita back. Jita is my boy. You'll bring him back. I'm not making a promise, but Jita is my boy. And where I am, I would want Jita to be. Okay. And I, I think Jita is happy that I'm in NPP. I don't okay. have a doubt about that. Okay, so they approached yes. you, and uh, yeah, you didn't want to leave at the time. Yes. So the conversation continued. Go on. Absolutely. Ahead. And uh, so the co conversation continued, <clears> you know, and... Uh, these people, Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed at their resilience and level of tolerance because you know what a hard time I give to uh, NP, the, the, the ruling government. And sometimes, you know, I just call out your name as a minister and tell you all the wrong things you are doing. And that can be really frustrating, you know. But uh, some of these people will meet boy subs. Boy, you know, it's politics. You are still my friend. You know, and, uh, you know, these things kept going on and going on and going on. Up to a time, I felt that, okay, I think it's about time. I started reconsidering the invitation to NPP. Was that when, because people said um, Sabs fell on hard times, 
um, <laughs> he was really struggling to move along. Was that when actually the hard times started biting, you know, deeper? Peter, if I harder. Had, if I ever had a hard time, I think it was way before I even joined UDP. If I ever had one. Because I will never have a hard time, Peter, because I'm always content with what I have. If I was just about the happiest person in the narrow cells of uh, remand cell number two, <laughs> how can I have a half ti hard, hard time as a free man with access to the mosques and, uh, and the glistening beaches and my beautiful family? I've never had a hard time that can push me to take a decision. That is not true. Mm. Mm. If anything, my fortunes have been successively being better and better and better despite the ban on me. Peter, but the country has taken a direction which eventually scared me myself. The rhetoric, the, the youth situation, especially, Peter, the, the recent uh, surge in deaths on the parkway, that really did something to me. And I started reanalyzing uh, my, my position within the state of affairs of the nation. Uh, and I think... Uh, Many people knew that I, I made the call for a national dialogue on the Barkway because I felt that uh, the people responsible, I mean, and not just government, institutions in this country were failing the young people of this country. And I came out and said, you know, we need to have a conversation. I'm not blaming anybody. For once I said I'm not even blaming government or EU, but let us have a conversation about the youth situation. Peter, we started this conversation again here. And you yourself, you were worried about the youth situation in this country. I'm still and am. despite I my... Still am. Absolutely. Everybody who cares about this country would be worried. Mm -hmm. So these and many other issues at hand made me to reconsider my position in the state of affairs of the nation. And just criticism will not do it. So when these offers kept coming consistently calling me here, let's do this, you know. Somebody told me this. He said, you know, somebody, you were giving us a, it's a cabinet minister. Mm. He said, you were giving us a hard time in running this country. Anytime you talk, we are worried because people listen to you. And he told me, okay, but you will talk, but you cannot force us to do what you want us to do. Why don't you reconsider what you are doing? Perhaps sometimes just tone down the rhetoric, reach out and offer some advice. We are the ones with authority. We will see what we can do. But better still, if you can come and join us, I think it's better. And that day, and this person has been after me for more than five years, but that day, what he said really got to me. And when you say you reconsidered your position vis-a-vis um, -vis the rhetoric and, and all of that, is that a euphemism for you reconsidering your role in the toxicity that you now decry and have decided to join the ruling party in trying to, you know, make the game a better place for all of us to live in. I would not choose the words you chose. Mm. But again, you are at liberty to choose your words. And, uh, you know, Gambians sometimes they use words that they don't know. But Peter, you know this language better than me, so I know exactly what you were saying. For whatever it's worth, I would not choose your words, I say. But I just felt that the th way things are going, mm -hmm. if I did not reconsider mm -hmm. my position and take a decision that would put me in a situation where I can positively contribute towards the prog progress of this nation, I could do more harm than good to the state of affairs. That is true. Okay. Yes. And this is why this guy said to you, whenever you speak, mm -hmm. um, you give them a hard time because yes. you have... You have a following. Yes, absolutely. And some of them, uh, what I hear people say, are cyber warriors. They also go online and spew. <laughs> Peter, they are not just you cyber know, warriors. You know, unfriendliness. At <laughs> some of them, they are real warriors uh -huh. because some people fought for me mm. physically on the ground when my election... Uh, even more, dang was even more yes, dangerous. Yes, yes. Uh, there was so much, so much. Uh, what I saw that day, you know, the boys came and they told me, we have fuel in, 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 in gallons. Mm-hmm. If you give us authority, we'll go and bond the fuel stations. I said, no. That is how committed some of these young people are. So the situation was really getting scary. And why do you think you are such a magnet, you know, for young people? What do you give them that they are not <laughs> getting from maybe their homes and, you know, the authorities that be? Because, after all, Sabali then was a mere campaign manager in an opposition party that has tried for decades mm -hmm. uh, to be in government mm -hmm. um, and failing all the time. <laughs> Peter, you are saying I'm failing. Now you are laughing at me. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing. 
I'm not laughing. No, that's I'm not it. laughing at all. Just, yeah. just, just, huh? just pulling your so, legs. So, I mean, uh, what, do you, you know, what do you give them? Hope? Peter, I will not give you a direct answer because I don't want to display all the weapons in my arsenal. This is a, <laughs> this is a long game, you, Peter. You fear that somebody <laughs> might be listening. And I say, know oh, people yeah. are copying me you on know, a daily basis. Cons- but so the point is, Peter, I'll yeah. tell you what has happened. You know, I've, I've, okay, it's, it's just funny how even things I just do just out of joke become national issues. I met a young person at the beach and I believe that guy is not a, a government supporter. He said, Sawali, how are you? We are fans. We want to take a picture. So I took a picture with this guy, and I saw he was happy. I put it on Facebook. I said, the youths are happy. Bam, the whole thing explodes. The youths are happy. The youths are not happy. The youths are... It became a whole national debate. But the young people of this country are actually happy that have made a decision to join the government. Now the rhetoric goes down. Now I get to... Because the young people of this country know whatever I have, I share with them. Be it cash, material, even the joy that I have, I share it with them. So, but then again, there's this bunch who is really, some are angry, some are confused, some are disappointed, and they, they reach out to me. One of them is a top UDP supporter. He sent a message from China. He said, Sabali, you know, I mean, what are you talking about? What was this thing about the, the youths are happy? I mean, youths are dying on the back way, blah, blah. I said, for once, I don't respond to everybody. But some of them, even if they are mm. against me, I just feel I owe them an expert. Because some of them were in the party looking up to me, relying on me, hoping that even if UDP gets the government, I will be the person to help them to get position to contribute to national development. So this person, I, I said, you know what? In 1997, just where were you? He said he was a kid. I said, I started work as youth officer at the Ministry of Youth and Sports in charge of youth and sports act- activities in the whole of West Coast region. From that 1997 up to, to, to today, Peter, whether I was at Central Bank, Budget Director, finance, or, I mean, Presidential Affairs Minister, Peter, even when I was a prisoner at cell number two at the remand wing, I always had these youths around me, and they get joy, inspiration, and guidance, and mentorship from me. And when I was in government, Peter, I've transformed the lives of thousands of young people. Just one of them came back from Holland yesterday, and he just gave me $20,000 I have in my pocket. I'm doing, going on ice cream shopping right how much now. Are you, how, how much are you going to leave with me? Leave no, no, Peter, you are not a youth. I just want to make the youth happy. <laughs> you, you've, you've passed the, the threshold. <laughs> so, 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 <laughs> so these young people are, Peter, I went to the bicentennial mm-hmm. celebration in, in Makati. Mm-hmm. Then, of course, I went to Mankamankunda, and then I slept in Basse. In the morning, mm-hmm. when the GRTS uh, Basse staff heard that, uh, they all came, mm-hmm. and they insisted I had to go to the studio for an interview. I didn't want it. I didn't ask for it. I didn't give them a dime. But they just they said they're happy that I am on the side of government so they can be more comfortable to relate with me. But each of them, mm-hmm. they are narrating stories of how I impacted their lives. Mm-hmm. DJ Jungle, for instance, who I brought from Basse to the Combos, to get him training in video editing, editing and TV broadcasting mm-hmm. from a radio DJ. So, Peter, there are literally thousands of those young people here in Freetown, in Nigeria, in Rwanda. I got messages from Freetown, Peter, that they are happy and they, 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 they're also part of this new bandwagon called The Youths Are Happy. They know, mm. Peter, and you know, it's not based on politics, by the way. I'll, I'll mention your name, whether you like it. Usainu Gambia. He's the, he's the guy who does the flag of yeah, Gambia. Yeah, that's thing. the flag man. Yeah, because um, I, I helped <clears throat> launch his career. Yeah. He said, people were subs. What's the problem? People are asking me what's happened was, and we said, you don't know that I don't even discuss politics with Sabali, which is the truth. I don't discuss politics with Usainu. And Usainu, I personally launched his career. So, and Usainu told them, even as campaign manager, Sabali never asked me to join the UDP. Because some of them, I see them on a platform that's nonpartisan. When I meet them, I take away my politics. Some of them, like Keba Langfofana, Secretary General of the NPP Youth Wing. I mean, Peter, you know the kind of rhetoric I've been sending. But Keba, it's always been love and respect. We meet occasionally, we debate, but most of the time, it's just love. They know my intention for the young people of this country, and they know that wherever I am, it's peace and joy for the youths. That is it, basically. Okay. It's, it's, not, it's beyond politics. I have been told that um, you've been disowned by many youth organizations um, since, that, that held you up as a, as a father figure. Since when did they own me? Peter, I, I leave a slogan, <laughs> can't cage me. <laughs> no, nobody owns Momodu Sabali. Mm. But you know what happened? That's what they wish. And if wishes were horses, mm. uh, Peter, then beggars would, would ride. Mm. This is their wish, but it's not. You know what they did? Mm. Some of these people, and I know this is not coming from the leadership of the party, they went and uh, convinced a women's group 
in Farafene, mm -hmm. who had adopted me as father, to strip me of, of that fatherhood. And, you know, I have uh, one of my friends, journalist, Ibrahim Ajara. Mm -hmm. He actually did a story mm -hmm. out of it and read it on the news just to laugh at me. And they know it's okay. I mean, I, I've got game spirit. So that's what they did. So when the news came to me, I said, ah, alhamdulillah. Oh. At least they honored me for a year or so. Guess what, Peter? This Saturday, I was back in Farafin. This was one women's group who stripped me of the fatherhood. Mm -hmm. Forty I companies. Each I company has a group. Forty of them came together and formally adopted me as their father. I don't fight for love. Whatever love I get, I think is grace from God, but I try to earn it by making sure I honor and respect people and show them love, regardless of their, their political affiliation. So it's their wish, but the reality is different. Okay. So when you decided to, to join the NPP, um, I suppose you had a first meeting with yes. um, President Barrow. Yes, I had a meeting with President Barrow. Um, how was that arranged? And um, it must have been, at first, an awkward moment. I mean, having the President... Um, now face to face with one of his <laughs> bitterest, you know, critics. Huh? Did he believe that you were actually, you know, going to the to the NPP for 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 real? That you were not well, going there as a mole? Well, I don't know what the president believes mm. or what he doesn't believe, but the moment was not awkward. I can tell you that, Peter. He embraced you with open arms. Oh, somebody! No, no look, look, Peter, to be honest. When he calls me Uncle Peter, how does he call you? Well, I, I, I don't know yet. I don't know yet. <laughs> well, don't, I, I know I'm his little he, brother. So. He, doesn't, he doesn't have a name for you yet? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. But really, what you said could have happened, but it did not happen. Peter Barrow is a very nice, tolerant, magnanimous human being. Even before that meeting, I had a meeting with Barrow twice. One was, you know, my other elder sister, Ramos Abali, mm. who was in UDP, NPP, and I moved her to UDP. Mm -hmm. The weekend that was happening, that was the greatest political uproar in the 2020, in the of the 20, 2021 election. Barrow drove along my street. I just saw some soldiers in the morning. I decided to go and stand at the gate, mm -hmm. and my UDP pickup was right there, and all my children came. Mm -hmm. Ministers that I know, when they saw me, they, 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 they jumped they, up they their wound windows. Up their, their, yes, their, they didn't their, want to... Mm. Billahi, Peter, Wallahi, and Baro knows this. He himself reminded me. Mm. Baro came up to my door, brought down his windows, waved me, and said, Sabali. I, I could not have done it. The other one was the last independence uh, celebration. That was after my detention in, in the, last de the previous December, and all the tension it created in the country. February, there was an uh, independence celebration. UDP was giving tickets. Somebody gave me a ticket to go with him. I said, no, I'm not going to go in. He insisted. I said, you know, this is, this Barrow might see this as deliberate you, provocation. UDP were given tickets? Yes. Last well, because the, the, the impression you get is UDP is never invited to state no, events. No, I think what happened, Peter, mm -hmm. to be honest, yeah. there was an event before that. Mm -hmm. Is a man do my, I will not move yeah, to yeah. one party and start yeah, lying yeah, against yeah, another yeah. party. Mm -hmm. There was an event before that, mm -hmm. and I think it was the late VP's funeral. Mm -hmm where a seat was received for the UDP party leader. Mm -hmm. He was not shown. And you know media. It portrayed a picture as if the UDP leader was invited and he did not go. But I think some, there were errors. I know how difficult it is to handle state events. After that, I think the government made it a point of duty to make sure that inv invitations were delivered and confirmed to be delivered. So I believe it, that was one of the occasions when these invitations were actually delivered. Mm -hmm. And to his credit, the party leader was up country in his home village. So Ibrahim Adiba, I'll mention his name, even though I didn't want to mention his name. Ibrahim picked the tickets and he called me. He said, let's go and represent the party. Why don't you want to mention Ibrahim Adiba? No, uh, there's so much petty talk going on. I don't want to be part of it. So yeah. that's why I No, we don't, we don't want yeah. petty talk yeah. here. So that's why I avoid mentioning people's yeah. names. But mm -hmm. since this one is a positive, I'll mention yeah, his sure. name. So he, he picked the... the Invitation, and he said, Sabali, let's go. I said, Ibrahim, are you okay? He said, Why? Let's go, let's go and sit in the same desk with Baro. I said, No, Ibrahim, that would be, Baro might see this as deliberate provocation. And if, if IGP Sanyang arrests us for this, even me, I will not blame him. And any judge we appear before with just sentences, it was a joke. Mm -hmm. But really, I, I didn't feel comfortable mm -hmm. knowing my relationship with, with Baro and, and his government for me to go on the same days with him. Mm -hmm. And when we went, 
we were received by the NPP griots and they were singing for us and the videos went viral. Mm -hmm. And after the ceremony, mm -hmm. people were filing to go and greet Baro and everybody was waiting for the moment Momodu Sabali was going to shake hands with Baro. Again, he greeted me with a smile. He said, how are you Sabali? I said, well, happy independence, Mr. President. And he said, in fact, you are the one dressed up for the independence because I dressed in national colors. Mm -hmm. So this is how cool and easygoing President Baro is. So the meeting actually was not awkward. He received me with honor, with respect. He received me as a brother, and he didn't show me any sign of anger during that, during that conversation. All right, it's half past nine. Sorry, half past nine. Half past ten. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to saying half past ten, in <laughs> fact, you know, uh, because we never get that, you know, that far beyond uh, ten o'clock, but it's a special program with Sabali. We will take uh, this conversation right up to... Um, uh, 11 o'clock, 77 for your SMS text messages. Those of you listening from uh, uh, within the country and plus 220-9232-333 or plus 220-77-11599. Abdullah Abu Aisha Jalo, listening in Umeya, Sweden, has sent in uh, the first message I'm going to read out this morning. Good morning, Uncle Peter and Sabs. Could you ask Sabs the following? How would he see himself as someone who is or was a motivator to many in the sense that the party was given hard times and criticism and now with that party? Uh, I suppose the party he was giving, yes, he was giving hard time to. Uh, again, in the context of those who look at him as a motivator, what is his position with regard to some of the criticism he used to uh, say regarding those issues? And if he still believes in them, how would he help them change? So let's take the first one first. Uh, how do you see yourself as someone who was a motivator to many in the sense that the party you were giving hard times to and criti criticizing is now your party? I think this has created a, a wave of liberation in the country because I believe, Peter. The liberation? Is liberation, I'm oh. telling you. Come on, sir. <laughs> I am telling you, Peter. You know, uh, human beings by nature are afraid of criticism. And this is one of the greatest causes for failure in, in people's lives, even in individual pursuits. Mm. Decision I took. I know at least a dozen people who want to take the same decision, but they are afraid of the, 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 the repercussions. It doesn't wear in the top executive of the, of the party. I would not get into the details, but I, I, I know at least a dozen people want to make this decision. You're, 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 failing, they, you're, you're failing me today. Well, Peter, show me it. <laughs> show me it. You know, so there are many people who want to take this decision. Mm. But the fact that I've taken this decision, within the next one year, you'll see a lot of changes in this country. And it's not, it's not just in politics. People are supposed to be themselves and live the life they want to live so long as they are long breaking the laws of God or man. To thy own self be true. You know, that's, that's what, what Shakespeare taught us. Mm -hmm. So I took this decision. Mm -hmm. I knew that this kind of question would come. But I have an answer for it. I was not in criticism and opposition for the sake of criticism and opposition. I was in it for the sake of making, making the system better. If I come to a point where... Mm -hmm. In economics, we have this concept called diminishing returns. Mm -hmm. My efforts were bearing this diminishing returns. Maybe in, in, in the basic economic model, it's a farm, you farm it, you farm it until the, the crops uh, produce start dwindling. Mm -hmm. You go to a new farm. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I'm being invited, and I know I'll be welcome, that made it easy for me. Being a motivator, if there is any person I've motivated in this country, it's Kebal and Fofana, the Secretary General of the NPP. I've seen his growth over the past 10 years, the NPP youth wing is full of my admirers and supporters. You know, NPP diaspora. You know, some of them came. We already on TikTok. So, you know, the point is, uh, Modi Sabali cannot be dichotomized. I belong to everybody. Mm -hmm. When I went to NPP, you know, there was so much excitement in APRC. And if I am a motivator in, in this country, I started it off with the young people of APRC, when Honorable Sidin Babu Ye Sonko, Pamalik, Sisi, and others who take me to their youth events, even though I was not at the time then a member of the party. So what I believe is, in politics, if you have 55% in an election, is called a landslide. I believe I'm hitting close to 70% in terms of the number of people who are happy with my decision. So it's a plus. And then the criticism, now I go inside. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to come here, mm -hmm. Peter, and tell you what's wrong with Barros' government. Forget it. 
But if I have issues, I know I have access to all the ministers. I know at some point I will have access to the president. The permanent secretaries, they had a retreat when this announcement came out. Somebody called me. He's my mentee. He said, Sabs, I thought you had influence in this country, but it's today that I know the level of that influence. He said, everybody was happy. Because I've worked with these people. And they know that I'll tell you as is. If I can support you, I'll support you. If you do something wrong, I will tell you. That's it. So it's a plus. The motivation continues. What is your position with regard to some of the criticism you used to say um, against um, the government? And um, uh, do you still believe, you know, in uh, yeah, your position <laughs> than opposition? <laughs> now the point is, Peter, I don't say anything that I don't believe in mm -hmm. and I don't uh, trade in lies. Mm -hmm. But what happens, you know what's the danger about being in opposition? Mm -hmm. And one of my cutters, I'm sure he'll be listening here, he once told me this. He told me, you know, somebody, you should not say everything that's wrong about the government. I mm -hmm. said, why? He said, because you are teaching them, they will adjust. Those criticisms did not go in vain, Peter. And, and you and I know that. You know, to, to, to I mean, when I listened to one of uh, C.D. Keta's interviews, it was CNBC. Mm -hmm. I was scared, man. <laughs> Every... Practically, the, the last conversation I had with you, mm -hmm. all the criticisms I levied, levied against CD, mm -hmm. I saw CD factoring those things in his new policy measures. So the criticism was not in vain. Mm -hmm. I think the government has made certain adjustments. Mm -hmm. Peter, I'm sure you heard that I endorsed CD's budget way before I, 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 I made the shift. Yeah. Because I believe that by the media, by June, mm -hmm. the government expenditures were all way below target. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time they laid the estimates for 2024, mm -hmm. everything I was criticizing them for, I saw them factored in. I saw the deficit come down. I saw domestic borrowing go down. So, I mean... The criticism was for a purpose, mm -hmm. and I'm sure some of the government officials mm -hmm. were listening. Just right on cue, what is your reaction to the newly approved IFM loan, this texter asks? I mean, you know what, Peter? Mm -hmm. Perfect. You know, Peter, when I, when I endorsed the budget, mm -hmm. I was full 100% UDP. Many people were not happy. You know, but Peter... I some people say, yeah. or they said... Mm -hmm. Those were the first open signals you were sending that, um, yeah, you were about to, uh, you know, to leave the well, well, Peter, that was not the first time I said a good thing about the government of President Barrow. And mm. President Barrow and his allies, they know it. On several occasions, they would do something and people would say, uh, the, the former president's bill, I supported it. I thought it was a good thing for the democracy of this country. I could make a, make, name a, a dozen other instances. Yeah, th that was getting closer to even your unveiling as member of the NPP. Now, Peter, so. I am telling you, that was one of the most unpopular bills that were brought in by this government. And several other occasions mm -hmm. where I was deep in UDP and the government would do something that I think is right, I would say right. Mm -hmm. On the budget. No, IMF loan. No, it, it has a link, Peter. Okay, okay. I, I'll always answer your question. Okay. <laughs> no, On the right. budget, yes. when they laid the, the, the half-year report, mm -hmm. I knew CD was getting his act right. Mm -hmm. The budget came, I thought the budget was right. Mm -hmm. If what I said was a lie, mm -hmm. you think the IMF would give, approve a program for the Gambia when the budget is not right according to macroeconomic fundamentals? This is a vindication of what Mouru Sabali said about the budget. Okay. I won't lie in, in my profession. Mm -hmm. Uh... Good morning, Peter. I want to take this opportunity to thank Momodu Sabali for taking the right step by supporting the ruling party to build a better nation. Momodu is too good to be in opposition. Did you ever feel that way <laughs> while you were in opposition? <laughs> that you were, you, you, well, you, you were too good uh, to, to be in opposition, having been uh, director of budget at uh, the ministry, having been in the Ministry of Youth and Sports. I mean, what is bigger in this country than the youth uh, dynamic? Having been a minister, having been a secretary general. Well, Peter, I, I appreciate the compliment, but I think it would be too rude mm -hmm. and unfair of mm -hmm. me to sit down here and say that I was, I'm too good to be in the opposition. And the opposition is broad. I know certain people have certain uh, angst and certain... Uh, negative reactions to a particular political entity. But uh, what right do I have, Peter? What moral authority do I have, Peter, to say that I'm better than Halifa Sala or, or C.D. Ajata or former minority leader Modlam Insane or Kame Seng Jamin? I, I can't say that kind of thing. Well, they did not hold the kind of positions you held. Well, it doesn't in, matter. But uh, peop these people have mentioned, <clears throat> these people have mentioned, and many others who've been in the opposition for years, they've contributed to the building of this country. 
the change we are enjoying here was brought for us by people who were in opposition. So I would not, I would not go into that kind of territory. I just felt that I was in opposition for all the right reasons, for the right time. I felt that the time had come for me to shift to the ruling party. Again, I, I appreciate the compliment, but I, I'm not in a position to make that kind of, uh, that kind of remark. Good morning to you, Uncle Peter. Please tell Sabs that um, we, the youth, are not happy uh, with him at all. Peter, tell him I'm very glad that he's uh, giving more life and impetus to my slogan, the youths are happy. I like the reactions. My regards to a good little brother, Barola Generalo, former Baba La Commando. <laughs> What's next for him? And this is coming from D.A. Jao. Oh, <laughs> wow. That, that means a lot, uh, Peter. D.A. is somebody I had a lot of respect for. Answer the question to us. What's, question? What's, what's next for you? Mobi. From from Baba <laughs> Baba la Generalo to uh, sorry Baba la Commando to uh, Barola Generalo is that your what? official uh, <laughs> is that is that your official uh, Monica now you know there are uh, many titles that's there but my my political boss yes. General Boxo he gave me the title of political dragon so and that's he, what you are now well he's not happy that that one is not trending so I don't know so I'm, political dragon yes yeah, so officially now on coffee time political dragon Mumudu Sabali is political dragon political dragon okay. yes as conferred by General Baxo okay because so, that, that's a generic name you yeah. can move anywhere with it well and, you can't go with Baba La, Gen Baba La Commando to Baro <laughs> <laughs> so Peter coming from DA that means a lot you know because DA and I have had a relationship most of the time we've not shared the same political that's why he calls you good little brother <laughs> yeah but I think he, he is the good elder brother mm -hmm. really Peter it's very difficult to deal with Mo don't you know? Mandela Mo uh, Moses here you know don't go Mandela Moses here no I'm not that type <laughs> I'm, I'm more inclined to criticism than praise <laughs> so but what next uh, DA what next is to make the youths happy that's my mission uh -huh. and we've started we're doing a Youth Happiness Tournament next mm -hmm. week, six aside. Mm -hmm. The game has started. And of course, to bring in as much support as possible for the NPP. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's the mission. Last right. night, I was in Wellingar at Cash Power Junction, bringing in some women leaders. Tomorrow, I'm meeting some youths from Jambur. Mm -hmm. so. As a Deutsch supporter, I see Mr. Sabali as a political opportunist. But I have to admit that he's a shrewd politician, says Ibrahim Abaji. Well, when uh, Doi saw the opportunity to join a coalition, they joined. How do you call that? It's opportunity. The word is, uh, it has a big root. Mm -hmm. You can have several derivations of it. That's my response. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, okay. Um, uh, maybe somebody doesn't want to ask this question. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask it before I go back to, uh, to the other questions. So what's the, what's the reward for joining NPP? The happiness and joy that the young people have, the youths are happy. In terms of position in public office? Well, there's nothing on the table, to be honest, Peter. Uh, and I, I heard uh, Deputy Director General or Deputy Managing Director or Deputy Director General, Basic Bank. Well, I've never worked in a commercial bank, by the way, and I'm not sure if I have the skill set. But has this been offered you? No. To be honest, Peter, there was not a single offer in terms of money or position. And but, a, but a car was offered. Well, they gave me a car, they said, in, and the car is not in my name, by, way, by the way. I appeared at State House, they said, use this car, you know, and it's okay. I'm, I'm, Peter, I don't even know how to drive, so a car is nothing big for me. But the point is, there was nothing offered. And in what, retrospect... What, ca what kind of car is it? I'll see, I'll see it afterwards. This is the most famous car in this country, Peter. It's all over social media. It's, is a, it? it's a gray Ford pickup, you know, they call it a Ford <laughs> Ranger. I'm shocked. <laughs> Because in a UDP car, I can, uh, because it's branded, but this uh, one, uh -huh. I don't have a special number plate, but everywhere I go, uh, he says, Sir, but I, at some point I got worried. I said, my driver, what's going on? He said, this guy is all over social media. People recognize it. Thank God, I'm not in social media, <laughs> so I didn't, uh, I'd like to see it after the after, after So the nothing program. was offered, yeah. and like I said, in retrospect. You, you have a car, I don't. How do I get a car? Don't ask me to join NPP to get a car. Peter, sell a player. <laughs> it's the most lucrative <laughs> business in this world. <laughs> The scouts are all over. <laughs> uh, okay, you should expect you should expect uh, you know emotions like this, uh, Peter. This guy has no integrity. He is um, either Sabali who is crazy or Gambians are crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah, we are all crazily in love. We are all crazily happy. He's right. We are crazy. Mm -hmm. We are mm -hmm. happy. Crazily happy. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> if you want to spew insults, uh, of course, I, you know, I take time to, 
<laughs> to go uh, through 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 all that. Um, so when you when you go on the campaign trail in the lead up to you know an election, what would your language be like? Well, that has started. I've started my campaign for 2026. Uh, I've, I've done. I've been on this stump for at least five times since I switched. Mm -hmm. uh, I was in Brikama on uh, what was that on Saturday. I was in uh, Jambur CDC and I was in Mahmuda and, and you know at all these occasions and, and I think somewhere else. The language is we have a president who wants to move the country forward. He has challenges. We've been criticizing him and that criticism itself is not very helpful in terms of the concentration of government. So for some of us, we know we have some skill, we have some influence. We want to come and be part of that. And we're asking everybody to come on board and be part of this development trajectory. That's the language in some. Maybe the press union should help you, Peter. <laughs> or, or maybe Ibrahim Asila as former journalist. <laughs> Getting, giving back to the profession. Just bear with us. We don't have the zillions that GRTS has. I wish we, we had. Um, yeah, so I'm now, I'm now using a guest's mic. Uh, be my uh, guest, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, you were campaign manager with UDP. Um, how high do you think you can go in NPP? I don't know, Peter, and I'm not actually craving any position. Because what has happened for me is since I joined UDP, way before I became campaign manager, I practically became became the face and voice of the UDP campaign bandwagon. So I, I'm not a person to create positions. That's my nature. If you give me a position, I will take it. But once I believe in a cause, I give it my all. And you'll begin to see that very soon. Okay. Yes. What will be your role in the party um, ahead of 2026? Well, I'm already working closely with the administrative secretary at the bureau. Uh, Peter, I'm a grassroots politician. So I'm going to travel the length and breadth of this country. Every single town, hamlet, Every ghetto, every campaign, my intention is to reach all of them by 2026 to sell the NPP borough agenda for national development, peaceful coexistence and, process, pro and, 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 and progress uh, underpinned by youth empowerment. That's my thrust. In opposition, you thought borough should not stand in 2026. Mm -hmm. Have you changed your mind about that? Well, um, politics is a funny game, Peter. Um, Tell me about it. I mean, I'm not, I'm no politician. Politics poli 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 is a very funny game. Mm. And I think what's going to happen in 2026, I don't know. I don't want to predict it. Barrow has made pronouncements about his intentions. Whatever he decides, I will support. Including if he wants to stand? Absolutely, without a doubt. Absolutely. If Barrow decides to stand, I will lead his campaign. And how will you sell that to people you... Peter, it's very easy. Well, like, that's easier for me than drinking attire. <laughs> you know... Um, to I, people I, you, you, you know, you once, you know, I mean, told that Barrow should not stand in 2020. Well, why would it be difficult if those people are willing to listen to me now that I've even shifted from opposition to government? It's easy. They know there's a reason. Anybody who knows Mohamedou Sabali and is a genuine observer knows that I'm not frivolous. Whatever I do, there's a genuine reason for it. And that's why people of this country, in their overwhelming majority, would want to listen to me, even if they disagree. And all Momodu Sabali wants is, give me your ear. <laughs> the rest will live with God. If Baro decides to stand, I will lead his campaign. UDP, just as in 2021, are convinced that um, it's not a question of if, that they will win in 2026. What's the question? The question is, mm -hmm. I mean, how will, in, how will you ensure that that doesn't happen? For the UDP? To win. In 2026. They are saying they will win in 2026. <laughs> Just as I knew it. Peter, I know UDP and the UDP, they know me. Uh, I think I said this again in my interview uh, yesterday. President Barrow, over the past six months, had made certain moves, taken certain decisions. Anybody who knows politics and knows how Gambians react to government projects and positions and policy pronouncements, you would know that the game is over. NPP is winning 2026. Give us an example of Look, those moves he took uh, within the last... Peter, you know, you know, NPP's big problem has been, uh, I think they've had a challenge regarding PR. There are a lot of good things happening, uh, government implementing projects that don't even see the light of day because social media is tilted towards the opposition, and I was part of that problem. 
Peter, to be honest, recently I was really surprised. Peter, I'm the biggest critic of this government. I called one CEO yesterday. I said, mm. me being in government does not mean I will not criticize you. And he knows I, I mean it. And he's my friend. So I, I'm a big critic of NAWEC. So the NAWEC PRO, he always says, uh, anytime we meet Peter, it's like a circus. Mm -hmm. I am criticizing and he's defending. And even though the NAWEC, the NAWEC MD is my close friend and buddy. So I was talking to this guy. So, but there's another guy. He's a journalist. He gives NAWEC a hard time. He said, you know what? You guys, power is still not good. You know, so the, the guy oh, said... Oh, no, I say that. If that's what, uh, you know, no, I mean... No, 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 time, no, uh, no listen, time listen, yeah. listen. Uh -huh. This particular guy actually mm -hmm. admit that there has been an improvement. Mm -hmm. But he said mm -hmm. that improvement, he's mm -hmm. again criticized that improvement is because we are in the cold, cold season and the demand for power has reduced. But this guy told me something that I never knew, that these people, they have a solar farm in Jambur. I never knew about this people. Seriously? Yes! It's complete, ready, ready to be operated. To be honest, people, I was shocked. Because I could Seriously? Be, yes, they have a solar pan, <laughs> plant in Jambur. It's ready. So there are several things like that that President Barrow has done, and nobody is talking about I it. Used to, I used to own a small piece of land, you know, in that area. There, please, where, where, please sell it to where, me. Where you, no, no. I mean, Nawek uh, took the whole place over and, and they compensated, and compensated me. Yes. Okay. No. Did I also deserve which, some which, change? Which, no, no. Which, <laughs> I, which, I, which, I have since, which I have since sunk in Banjul United Football Club. The, the, pl the solar plant is ready. Peter, I was shocked. And there are several projects like that that nobody is talking about. We will, we will shine the light on Barrow's development projects in this country, inshallah, very soon. You would have criticized that if um, somebody ne had told you while you were still in, never in, in ever, UDP. Never, ever, never, ever. You I, found it very difficult to see anything good in this government. Well, but when I see good, I, the point is, Peter, I, I don't, I don't uh, trade in falsehood. And they even know in that. That's why they're worried when I talk. Mm. Uh, if they said a solar plant, really, I, I would have commended them. But mm. I never knew about it. And that was my shock. Mm. Hello, Peter Sabali. What position do you expect to be given by the government? Because um, you are barred from holding any government position. That's the point. I'm not expecting anything. Because you are barred from holding no, not any just that. government uh, Peter, you know, I've, 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 uh, people don't understand me. That's the point. I've uh, been out of a job for what? 2017 to now is what? Six, seven years? 13. No, 2017 to now. 2017? It's about seven no, 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 years. Seven years, sorry, sorry. Seven so, years, Peter, yes. I mean, I've, 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 I've never been happier in my life. You know, they, they don't know that what makes the majority of people happy and what makes me happy are completely different. Mm -hmm. If I am given a job, I will take it, but I'm not eager for it. Peter, you know what I do when I wake up in the morning? No, tell me. I take my, uh, my moringa leaves and boil them, drink it with uh, honey. and I take a walk at the beach. Everybody who drives through Battle Harding, you see me. Mm. I take a long watch, walk and do my prayers and I come back, I do my attire. And then I go out to run whatever little business I run. All the business I run, I run on my phone, Peter. Mm -hmm. you know, so I'm not uh, desperate for anything. I know that the reason why the majority of Gambians are happy about this, including Gambians who are well-placed in international organizations, mm -hmm. it's that my capacity should be better utilized. Yeah. If the government should want that, it's fine. If the government does not give me a position, alhamdulillah, I will be crisscrossing the country, just mobilizing support for NPP. Fantastic. We're yeah. quickly running out of time. You used to have a name uh, for the borough circle, Kereng Kafo. Yes. Are you now a part of that Kereng Kafo? No. What's Kereng Kafo? By the way? <laughs> you know, Kereng is a squirrel. Ah, okay. You know, what squirrels do, you know, they go to the farm and take uh, peanuts. And you know, nimble at them. And and yeah. So uh, this actually happened. I attended a political meeting in Badibu. Mm -hmm. There is a town called Buraya. You know, Peter, I, my mother is my university. So my mother, when I was growing up, uh, I said, uh, she used to sing. The, the, her mother used to sing. Buraya wo kereyeti atumobusi tiyati la nyimal balapa. So the song is based on that town. Sing it for me. Don't just uh, tell me the words. <laughs> no, my voice is not very good, Peter. I don't want my <laughs> kiyankas and sarahulis to laugh at me. <laughs> Muhammad Jagana is listening, I'm sure. So, so, so he says, uh, the squirrel has taken over the whole heap of groundnuts from the squirrel owner. Is this not sad? But there's a woman who had mental challenges at the time. So whenever my mother sang that song, this woman would insult my mother because she believes the song also belongs to her. So because of some of the cases of corruption at the time, mm -hmm. so I said, you know what, some of these uh, government officials, they are like these squirrels. They are just taking our granite and taking them into their holes. It's criticism, but it's on a light note. Even NPP people, you know, when I came, I remember one of their media guys, Samuel, we know you, you don't hate us. You know, the only thing you used to say is Karen Kafo, but we know it's fun. The point is, Peter, nobody would deny that 
corruption has been a challenge. Exactly. I was, going to, ask you your, I fact. was going to ask you what's your position if, now. If on you will allow corruption. me. Yes, go ahead. If you will allow me, you will your ahead. answer. Go ahead. Corruption was a problem under Jawara. Uh -huh. It was a problem under Jame. Uh -huh. uh, Baro inherited it. Mm -hmm. So, I, I was constantly on them. Mm -hmm. But Peter, any honest observer, mm -hmm. has seen that this government has taken steps in prosecuting people for corruption. The anti-corruption bill has been passed. Mm -hmm. I've heard the uh, civil service minister, who I have a lot of respect for, Babu Karboi, come out and make pronouncement that attitude has to change for this country to move forward. Mm -hmm. So criticism is not for the case of the sake of criticism. I know this government listens. Even when they respond, when there are press releases and they find out there is an error in the press release, they come out and do a press release on a press release. Mm -hmm. People must say this as something bad, but it just shows that the government is listening. Is it? Absolutely, without Fantastic. a doubt. And you know they are listening, Peter. You know it. <laughs> you know Sankara listens to you. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's on a personal level. <laughs> Sams, thank yes. you very much for coming um, uh, to um, this special extended edition of Coffee Time. Um, your final thoughts, because we have just under two minutes left of the program. Well, thank you, Peter. I'm glad to be here. Congratulations on the new edifice. I always believe in the power and importance of the media in the democratic space. So if you're upgrading, that's a plus for everybody. I just want to say thank you to everybody in this country, the lovers and haters. But I want to say a special thank you to President Barrow for accepted me, accepting me wholeheartedly with great honor. Thank you to NPP. Thank you to UDP for the period I, I served them, especially the party leader and secretary general my own beloved father, the Honorable Lawyer, Usain Mukundada, and his family, and his family, and I repeat that for a reason, because I was part of the family. Now we are moving on. I, I said this. I took this decision for country. It's not against any individual or entity. It is for the country. And I'm willing and ready to join President Barrow and his team to make this country the best that it can be, to get the best for this country on a very healthy and peaceful democratic environment, but with special emphasis on ha what I... I was going to say, how much time does Barrow need to achieve that, make this country the best it can be? You know, like I said, Peter, maybe when I come back here, mm -hmm. I'll try to yes. give you the details of the things President Barrow I'm glad has. you're committed to coming back. Because, absolutely, I mean, without this is, a doubt. Yeah, there's, 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 there's much more uh, absolutely. in this conversation. There are certain decisions and moves that President Barrow did in the past six years. It has laid a solid foundation for accelerated growth and development in this country. And Barrow is not short-sighted. He's looking for the long term. When he thinks about the transformation he wants to do in this country, he says it within the framework of his party. He says NPP. Barrow says, I'm going to do something here. That Thank you for watching um, Kibaro Network. We have um, we heard from uh, Mohamed Sabali's statement of, of why he left the United Democratic Party. And um, what he said about um, people that uh, wanted him to leave, and then among them are the top um, executives of the United Democratic Party. Uh, basically, I think uh, what we understand from his statement is that um, he left the United Democratic uh, he left the United Democratic Party based on um, the pressure that he was receiving from individuals within the party. I think, uh, from my own perspective, I think that should not have been the reason. And for me, it's not genuine. Um, out of experience, I think um, majority of us, you know, engaging in politics and then interacting with humans here and there, it is all about um, confrontation and then, uh, you know, uh, facing challenges all over. In any institution that you are, and the political parties and all that. It is expected that if you are heading any department within that um, uh, political party or any institution, it is obvious that you will face challenges, you will face um, obstacles, and then people will be jumping from one from your one soldier to uh, soldier to another. So I think that would not be a genuine reason why Momodu Sabali could have left the United Democratic Party. And um, of course, I have some some issues when I heard him say uh, that um, he was confronted uh, by the um, uh, NPP militants that he have to uh, join them, and then he was promised a lot of uh, you know um, opportunities. Basically, I thought what would have happened is, uh, from my own perspective, I think Sabali for 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 being realistic to the Gambians, Sabali was not 
honest to United Democratic Party. I thought how I was seeing Mamadou Sabali as an individual and how he was operating, how he, he appeared in the public uh, from um, the statements that he basically gave on his normal updates by the time he was uh, someone that was very trustworthy by hearing his statements, by hearing his words, by looking at him individually, his appearance and all that. Now if he says he was engaging those people and then, you know, basically what he said is I engage uh, or I talk to some individuals. That means he left the majority, the people, the youths, the people that loved him uh, for no reason. We loved him. We loved him. We gave him our hearts because we thought he was realistic to us. We thought he meant the statement that he was giving the Gambian people and he meant whatever that he was saying. Now I am beginning to understand that uh, whatever Sabali was saying, he, does not, he never meant a word of what he was saying to the Gambian population and the attacks that he he launched against the uh, against Adam Barrow and his administration. I do not expect that I have to talk to Barrow's administration, his ministers, his permanent secretaries, and then they have to call me and uh, talk to me um, like a brother or whatever that he called it. I thought something is still hidden behind that Sabali never mentioned in his interview. We are human beings. We think, we analyze, and we thought Sabali could have said what was going on. We all know we all felt challenges. What Sabali is holding, someone else wanted it, and he picked it up from someone. The popularity, someone else wanted it. That is the reality in politics. If you are popular in, in politics and you are holding a, a, a political position, you are expecting that someone will insult you, someone will give you a punch, and someone will backbite you. Someone will, will, will obviously uh, get on your, on, 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 your, on, your, on your neck. That is the reality of politics. In fact, everywhere, that's the nature of our, our 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 lives right now anywhere you go any 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 institution you are expecting people to go after you more specifically if you are holding a position that a lot of eyes are, are, are put into so i left united democratic party because i i had a confrontation with other people because someone wanted to punch me because someone was 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 holding my neck because someone was was trying to 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 to, to, to do this this and that. whatever that he, he may call it i don't believe in it i believed he saw something that he wanted and he went for it that is my analysis Sabal is a brother and he remains a brother i have nothing against him and I will never. But I also have beliefs. I have principles. And I believe them. And I also emphasize my beliefs. Even in the eyes of people that do not want to hear my from my from my version. Thank you for watching Chibaro Network. It's your brother again, Pamela.